Hey guys, so I was making my last video on North Korea not collapsing after the end of the Cold War, which the link is in the description if you'd like to check it out, and I noticed that North Korea has such a bizarre foreign policy. And then I came across how Israel and North Korea at one point in time interacted with one another and still sort of do. Uh, sort of. And boy, this is just so absolutely bizarre. Like, think of the two countries that dominate headlines globally for some questionable reasons and put them in a box and see what happens. So why do they hate each other? I'm going to go over some of the key developments that have happened between both countries, see what they have on each other, and if their relations are getting any better or any worse. So strap in and let's get it. So both countries were established after World War II, and from the get-go, there have been no formal recognition or diplomatic ties that have ever been established between both states. North Korea supports Palestine and refuses to recognize Israel, calling it an imperialist satellite state of the US. As the US and Israel are quite buddy-buddy, North Korea has never wanted anything to do with them, and saw them as another outpost of Western imperialism. For the Israelis, they refuse to recognize North Korea and view South Korea as being the sole legitimate government over the Korean Peninsula. So from the start of their beautiful and blossoming relationship, they haven't always seen eye to eye. Throughout the Cold War, North Korea armed many of Israel's neighbors that were hostile towards Israel, including Iran, Syria, Libya, and Egypt. They also sent pilots to Egypt during the Yom Kippur War and sent aid to the PLO. This ceased towards the end of the Cold War though, North Korea was also behind an attack on Israel in 1972 known as the Lod Airport Massacre when they trained a Japanese Marxist group in North Korea to go to Israel and attack an airport in Tel Aviv, which killed 26 people. Just a little bit bizarre though. When the victims' families of the attack sued North Korea in 2010, North Korea was sued and was ordered to pay $378 million in damages, which of course, never happened. When North Korea was opening up to foreign tourists in 1986, Israeli citizens, as well as civilians from other countries like the US and South Africa, were forbidden from entering North Korea. Once the Cold War had ended and North Korea found itself a bit more economically isolated, I guess it started opening up and was doing whatever it took to continue to survive as a state. This is where the relationship between Israel and North Korea gets a little bit spicier. In 1992, just after the Soviet Union collapsed, North Korea needed to somehow survive and was much more open to considering foreign economic investment to keep the country moving. At one point, the North Koreans were considering Israeli economic investment, which centered around a particular gold mine in North Korea. In exchange, the North Koreans would stop exporting missiles or severely limiting their exports to Israel's enemies, mainly Iran. On the surface, it seemed like a bit of a win-win. So when the North Koreans invited Israeli representatives to Pyongyang, they invited the Mossad and members of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. These two groups went to Pyongyang, but they didn't even know that the other group was there at the same time and what their intended purpose was. The countries had such poor relations with one another and they were so unknown that Israel didn't even know what entity was meant to be dealing with North Korea. So when the delegation from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs was boarding their plane to leave, they saw the Mossad deputy director on the same plane and they were just like, what is this? Anyway, this amounted to little, and it turns out that the Mossad and due to pressure from the Israeli government and the US weren't too favorable of opening relations with Pyongyang and would rather risk their chances of North Korea arming Israel's enemies than to cooperate with North Korea entirely. Probably for the best, I would say. North Korea isn't particularly known for being an economic powerhouse or having the latest military developments. In 1999, the North Koreans again tried to reach out to Israel, demanding $1 billion in payment from Israel if they wanted Kim Jong-il to stop exporting missile systems to Syria and Iran. Israel rejected the offer, but it's funny how the North Koreans kept on trying with this and it seems to be their only form of leverage. Maybe if Israel did pay the $1 billion, it could have helped the North Koreans pay off that hefty court order, hey? Currently, both countries have no diplomatic relations, with North Korea continuously calling out Israel for human rights abuses and crimes against humanity against the Palestinians, which to me feels a bit of the pot calling the kettle black type of situation, knowing North Korea's track record with human rights. It looks like relations won't be normalized anytime soon and might continue to be covert and at a very unofficial level. So what do you guys think? Do you think Israel and North Korea should be homies or should they keep on hating each other and measuring their missile sizes? If you like the video, comment what you'd like to see next. Thanks for watching guys and peace out.